And all this area would be cleared out. You could clear it out in Fisherman if you fishermen could go on that side. Mm -hmm. And you could build the facilities, the jetty, you could refurbish the crane right there. Okay. Huh? Why spend millions of dollars to build up temporary Okay, well, we'll take that into consideration. Huh? The whole place here is empty. They could build a jetty there. Yeah. And then you all will use that jetty by me. Yes. Okay. But I don't see why, why, we, why we think about all this. And that's what we came here for to discuss it. Just yeah. about what, is, what are your uh, inputs into it. We will have the efficient facility to remove the people and then bring them back here. That will cost me to ask the fishermen to move. And if the fishermen and them here, that they're going to have that crane refurbished. And then one from the great clay for you for Do you think they will have to go and let the crane is like for them? So I don't see the point in relocating the company. Between the market, what would occupy between the fish market and the What would occupy? I think we should vote on the wall and let the crane is like for them. Yes, but I think the fish market would have to be there for the fish market. Okay. So we'll look at that. Take it on that right side. I'm feeling it. I do you have um, any comments on um, the facilities itself and anything that you think that we have neglected to include? Yeah, please. But we are quite certain to include all. When we, when we ask for this gift, that will bring all the fishermen from the jetty, all of the the market, to occupy this area. Huh? They will have to occupy this area, and this will be in And I believe this, that fighter jetty can accommodate everybody. And even have room for example. Right? And I think everybody will agree with that. All the fishermen here, if you tell them, move to an interview, you hear, 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 and they are already rejected many times. Right? So the better way for all is to get the two people that occupy them with them and give them to them. And that will help. That will help. That will help. That will help. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joel Quintal. I know. And I am here today because I've been following this redevelopment project for the last 20 years or so. I'm also here today because this meeting was carried to be a public consultation. Now, I believe that this meeting today is a disrespect to the fishermen and them. You know why? Because you all don't want to meet with them in a private meeting with this re revised plan. They're knowing about this for the first time and you're allowing them to trash out all of this in the public, in the public forum. That is not right. I understand that they have been requesting a private meeting with Unicorn and they have not receive that private meeting. You know, so this, it seems to me that you all decide what you all want to decide already, right? But and not only that, but you have stated certain other aspects of the phase one development, but you haven't given, given us the status, right? For instance, the reclamation of the 2.8 hectares, the coastal wall, we want to know the status of the progress. The San Carlos project, what is the status? The removal of PTSC, what is going on with that? The procurement of the mixed use development area. We want to know about if contracts have been awarded. And I'm also an advocate for three areas of interest which I'd just like to um, elucidate here. I would like to see continued accommodation for the sea bathers. 
to Aban stand or cultural um, stand for events down on the road because we have we have people here. It's a community. Then you can have um, you can have drumming, dancing, stick fighting, whatever um, you may have. And also to be included in the development like a craft center or a row of craft booths for craftsmen. Because you want to be able to attract people to improve the economic situation. And, and that is my take on this for this Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, at this point, um, we did not, um, we came here to discuss the sustainability, so I must apologize that um, we would not have um, given a status of all the other um, elements of the project. Um, if you would like your status, I can give you a brief status for some of them. Um, for the reclamation and for the sea road, we are currently in the CC process, so we would not be able to commence until we have our CC. Um, I want to ask a question. Everybody here. We're talking about the fish market, which is my life view, and the fishing community, which is my life view. Right? I want to know what about the people that are living within the community? What you all intend to do with them? And where are you carrying them? Would you leave my boats here and put me toko? Or would you leave me right here and develop me? Right here with my vote and my community. Thank you. Before I said what I said before, we did not come with the intention of discussing um, the whole development, but just the fishing facility, and that is something I cannot comment on at this time. It's what not you in my got? I do not in my food you at this time. Miss Candice, you all are you got? Yes. You all deal with development. With development. So why my suggestion is yeah. instead of spending all this billion of dollars, why don't you leave the fishermen right here and the developers right here? Yeah. But we are doing that for the fishing facility. We are doing you right here and developing right here. Yeah, we have already agreed that the fishing facility will be built here. And we have our, we the fishery division, together with the court and the fishers, will work together to finalize the designs and to make sure that your views are incorporated in the design. It is the policy of the division when we are building facilities or when we are facilitating the construction of facilities that the fishers are included in the designs. They have already provided their input and that will supply to the court and those 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 um, those considerations will be taken into account in the design of the facility. Yeah? Yes, Fisherman and things work up to general research. Yeah. What all they have in place? Like, yes, all they want to do that to all will be discomforting us. Yes. What all they have in place for what discomfort? All they put anything in place like before they move. When when we have to move things lost in the work, thing, the vendors lost in work because all they'll be bringing in big equipment to all the work and thing. What all they have in place? All they have any compensation for us for that? 
Well, let us be something. We'll have to discuss and coordinate as it goes along. Um, we'll be in close communication with fisheries division to ensure that it is a seamless process as possible. Because I now spend a lot of money on my room up there to get my thing in order because just last year it had a big fire. I believe everybody knows about the big fire. It was about sixty, seventy thousand dollars net in general kind of things up in my room. Nobody ever compensated me. I'm trying to get back on my foot, you know. But to just come and move everything and now buy a container, put it down there, and then to come and move it again, or they must reimburse me or something. Well, Mr. Gould would have made a suggestion, so we will be following up on that suggestion. We will be discussing with the fishermen the options, and we will come to some agreement with the fishermen in follow-up meetings. Yes. Hi, my name is Gary Abood, and I came with um, other presidents from other fishing centers. We were invited by the, by the Secretary of the South Andrew Association, because we've been looking on. But we have been part of and party to several government plans to so-called improve facilities. But there's several things that are wrong here, very, very wrong. The first thing is that when I was looking for the meeting, I thought it was a police meeting. I've never <laughs> seen so many police. And these are amongst the nicest, most friendliest people you'll find anywhere in the world. So I'm a bit concerned why all these police, and they have arms on them. It's such a peaceful meeting where people are simply trying to inquire what is the future of their lives and livelihoods. The second thing is that I'm very disturbed by what I've heard so far, especially the words that you've said. Because if people are crying out to you and asking you what is to happen to them, their livelihoods, mm -hmm. they had a fire, they lost everything, and they're fighting to get back. Mm -hmm. They're worried about relocation. Now, I can understand that you're not in a position to give a definitive statement, but there's a process that you seem not to be aware of. And that is that you are obligated, obligated in law, to conduct a social impact assessment. And that social impact assessment would include consulting the very same people who are making concern, their concerns raised. You cannot answer that, yes, well, we will get together the fisheries division. And as things go along, we will solve these. It doesn't work like that. In law, you have to create a blueprint to ensure that you are mitigating, minimizing the impact of their concerns. But more than that, you made mention, and you should be fully aware, but either you're not through your own ignorance of the law, or you're deliberately underrepresenting the law itself. Say that there's a CC process and we're on the application process. These people who came here fighting for their livelihoods and their community, they are not aware and you're obligated to let them know that you have been given a draft terms of reference for the preparation of the EIA. But it will appear that I am conducting the consultation because I'm informing them what you are duty bound to let them know. And that draft terms of reference, as Narissa will tell you, it obligates you to consult them on the draft terms of reference. But fortunate for you, it does not obligate you to record or pay any cognizance to their concerns, but at least you must consult them on what the EMA is telling you you must study in this EIA. So what they don't know is that you didn't, you didn't, you didn't even let them know about the draft terms of reference. They don't understand the critical importance of the draft terms of reference, and that that is in fact what you will be obligated in law to study and look at and determine when you do your environmental impact assessment. So they must be considered and they must be consulted on. So I thought today you were coming to share with Salim and all the responsible men here who have serious concerns about protecting their livelihoods and the livelihoods of those who are involved in the sea, that you will be bringing the draft terms of reference to show them, look, this is what the EMA say we need to look at. And in fact, in this draft term of reference, the EMA, not business with that man here since he's two years old, and it's not business with this fellow and that fellow concerns. And now you need to tell us, is this okay for you? 
even though you're not obligated to listen to one word they say, you could muscle in and out and get fully armed, you're not obligated to listen. At least you're obligated to give them the opportunity to say, and you fall short there. The second thing is, I would suggest that you appoint, as Larissa will confirm, that a joint stakeholder committee, in support of what the gentleman has said, a joint committee, as is usual, you could reserve the majority so you could out vote the stakeholders, but you should have a sense of inclusion with the Fisheries Division, the Ministry of Planning, the Prime Minister's office, if he so wishes, your team, but allow the fishermen to sit down with you together and work out a plan. And then that plan should be what you come here with. Not to come here with a plan when what the fishermen are showing us is the exact opposite of what you showed. And they're saying that this is what they want that they gave it to you all in January. So and I think it's very adversarial the way it is now, and locking these people out when this is all they have. This is a job that you've been hired to do as a consultant, as a senior executive in, in the team. But this is their life. This is not a job. They don't leave you and go home. This is where they live. Um, and uh, that's, I think, I don't know if that is a meeting that we will have to have. However, this meeting was just to give the fishermen to discuss their laws for this meeting at this time. That is our CEC process. It's something that we have to follow, and it's something that we will and we intend on doing. If this consultation was not intended for that. And this is not the first consultation with respect of the fishing facility. We already had a consultation where we agreed that fishers would not be relocated because the first plan was for relocation. And they've expressed their views that they prefer to be to operate from this site and that they do not wish to move. And, and Unicot agreed to that. And we are at a stage now where we are designing a facility at this location. So the, the views of the fishers in terms of what key elements they would need, that was the purpose of today's meeting. They were provided with those designs that you were, that you have in your hands. UDCOT was provided with those designs. And it's to integrate those designs together with the space that is available, together with the whatever is happening in this area, together with the views of the fishers. And that is an ongoing process. Right? But Salim, I would strongly recommend that before your men move and evacuate these particular facilities, that you get it in writing, a guarantee and a legal assurance that you will be returned here. because. Plans change, and if you move from here, possession is nine tenths of the law. You have no guarantee that you will get it back. They say, Sorry, we told you that, but plans change. So make sure you get it right. Mr. Gary, thank you very much for your advice. If you have noticed that what I have said, I have said that there is only a few boats here that will have to move and they have enough space to build the facility. So a few boats here can always shift from the space. If we have three boat anchor when the jetty has to go, three fishing vessel anchor and the jetty could build here. The space is empty. So same boat moving, moving what? We don't have to move nothing much. That toy boat there, we don't even know what it is. Right? That could move and it will get room to build. And when they build, the fishermen will leave up there and occupy what is built. We never say nothing. We don't want nothing in writing. We want the jetty built. We don't want nothing in writing. Another thing that was said, this gentleman here, yeah, consultation or meeting. I don't want no private meeting with Unicorn. Any meeting with Unicot have to be with everybody. Right. Public consultation. All right. All right. Because there was a meeting right here on the 27th of January. Right? The Unicot has different officers in the meeting. And the meeting didn't start 15 minutes ago. You know what the officer said to me? He said, I see you in plenty of meetings and are you looking for personal gains? That is how you saw that, that, that he definitely my character in front of all the people 
right? And also, if you keep on this fight with professional men, they will get nothing. But the first officer said that. Bishop, did you all hear that? When he said that on the 27th March? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So this could end up in court. Say yeah, you say I sell out and I'm looking to collect for my own benefit, right? So I don't want no private meeting with Judica. Neither can be division to discuss this development. Any meeting to hold? Right there. Let it be right there with everybody. Here everybody. What is the decision? Right? Fisher Hope, do you all agree with that? Yes. yes. Right. So all the private meeting, I think, we don't want that. Right? We want to have the media here. This is why the last meeting on the 4th of July, this is why we had the media here to hear what is said and what is not said. I am happy to have all the police here to hear what is said and what is not said. I wish at every meeting they could be here. Because we don't want no private meeting. Private meeting, if you could say what you didn't say. You hear what we say here? We want to see bill. Paper, giving me things in writing, that is when you get things in writing, that will end up going to court and all of these things. Give me a jetty, give me locker room, give me facilities, fix the crate, and we will move it. We don't want to have in writing. We, we want to see bill and we will move it. This is what we do. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Once again. <laughs> When we go out here whole night and fish, nobody knows pirates, bandits, criminals, we lost two boats, we lost engines, right? So I look at it right? Nobody knows our feelings, our heart. I got diagnosed with diabetes, 600% outside in the people in the Sasa, um, Thursday night. I had to rush to the, the emergency. Who cares about us? You were beaten and thrown overboard by Huffy. Huffy was both beaten and thrown overboard to drunk. Right? He lost his boat, boat number three. You go to the police. They can't do nothing, their hands are tied. Yeah. Everybody's fooling us for what? You don't have money? Come on, man, we are beings, we are human beings. And, and some people feel they are more educated than us. They are fooling us. Mr. Africa, you are quite correct. The first time I see you, you are very so on the nail. We need people like to support fishermen. These people are third people, third generation fishermen. And if fish are not even holding to the margin, please tell us we are not here till the night about 1900 fish. We are just on the next half, four hundred and eighty dollars in the afternoon. We get no subsidy, we get no support from nobody. When the bandits hold us up here, no police to assist us. None. So men like Baji and Mr. Abood and so on, the president say we appreciate that so much. Do you want to stop the fishing on the border? We didn't want you go in there, you are the leaders. Remember the blood of the people is in your hands, the leaders. Thank you. No private meeting. No private meeting. Yeah. 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 So, if, if there are no other common meeting where we will fine tune the designs with the fishermen, uh, we, like I said, we already have a template that was that was done before with the Ministry of Agriculture that will be incorporated, and it will be discussed with the fishers and signed off on by the fishers, okay? which is the standard practice for us with respect to fishing facilities. Yeah. Could say, could say something just to yeah, yeah, yeah. Out, out of the out of the uh, okay. out of, okay, we can close what, and then you what, can speak. What did that man just say? What did that man just say? Something wrong? If you have folks who have problems in the life, you know. Who could tell you invite me to a meeting and I'll be This is the new fishing regulation, right? This was given to me in the job fishery management bill in 2018. The Prime Minister said that this bill will pass on the 31st of August. What happened is the election come, we don't know if it will pass in here. But inside of this, 
In 101 years, the new regulation has not been renewed. And inside of this have all the new laws and all the... What it is I don't know is that if this will address all the problems in the fishing industry. What it is, what it is going to Parliament, I don't know. And what it is it have in it, I can explain it to you. It's very difficult. So all the problems that we are having in the fishing industry, when the new fishing regulations come, will it address everything? Right, now this is the old question what Fisherman was just saying. This suffocation and this problem in the fishing industry. I don't know if the new fishing regulation will address all of that. And this is a question of fishery division and um, maritime services, which you will have to pay license for your boat and then nobody is coming down here to explain this to you. But this is going to parliament the past. I don't know if it's this. This is a draft copy. I don't know if they're better, if they're worse than it. I don't know what it is. But this is going to parliament the past of the new fishing regulation. Um, yes, yes, I will Right, so we, have, we, do have, we do have a program for where we would be engaging fishers in the discussion process. That draft bill, like Salem said, went to Parliament, the Prime Minister laid it in Parliament, and he requested that it go before a Joint Select Committee of Parliament to have a report by the 31st of August. However, Parliament has been dissolved, so pending the outcome of the elections, we don't know what is the status of the bill as it stands. All we know is, it, is that it's been laid in Parliament. Uh, depending on what happens after elections, we will have a clearer idea in terms of the time frame for how the passage of this is going to take place. But, we do have it in our program that we will be coming to the associations. We understand it's a very technical document, but you have to understand it's enabling legislation. So the specific the details will be worked out in regulations. But this gives the authority to manage the resources, to control how many fishers operate. And that will be done. It, it, the, the systems to be developed is in, is in the development of a management plan, which you are required under law to participate in. Right? So. That piece of paper is enabling legislation. The details, the specific details, would be made in regulations to come later. We have any say in that that could correct certain Of course, of course. It is currently. When they pass their laws, they take people who like with the lawyers and the people, but the normal men who apply the same work in the city have no say in that. No, what no, they have so like right have no now, say in that law. No, no. So right now, the people. I know we're going to train, so uh, maybe we should close and I will talk about the bill a little no, bit. Close. Or you no, want to do it one time? Because we want, you can't. No, you see, you see, no, when I'm no, doing you want to continue? No, 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 have a licensing system to put systems in place to ensure that fishers' livelihoods are secured. You understand? Let me give you one law that's having the book that high age. Uh -huh. You have a, a, a child under 16 years. Let me say you play a little food. Now you want a boat and you, 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 you use a seaman, you have your little boat on it. You cannot take it to go carry out in the sea to fish them. The, the fine is $150,000 child labor. It there is a provision for children under 16. It's in it. No, no, no. no. There was under 16, which is child labor. I'm explaining. Are you right? Are you right? You can't get a child to fish this day, you know. Let me get it pulled outside. The 2020 version recognizes that fishers take their children to fish. Right? There is a provisional permit that is allowed. No, no, yeah, but, but I want to make it clear, so people don't tell people about it, right? Your children can go to if there's a provisional permit granted. Yeah, that is for yeah, during, during school time, during school hours, that provisional permit will not apply because the law states that school children of school age need to be in school. So they can fish during, they can fish during school hours and on holidays, but those measures are to be prescribed in regulations. And that will be discussed with officials when we are ready to, to develop those regulations. All the law does 
is make general provisions to allow that system to take place. The details will be in regulations which will be discussed with you in developing the regulations. You understand? Yes, 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 we understand. We're not saying it's not going to happen. Can I say something, Sally? Yes, yes. I want to say something for all the fishermen here. I have been a supporter of Narissa's work for more than 10 years, maybe 15, 20 years. But I'm not a supporter in the way in which they have done the work. Because that legislation was first drafted that we were aware of back in 2008, 2009. 1986. 1986. Trinidad has the oldest fisheries legislation on the planet Earth. On the planet Earth. So it's a disgrace that the legislation has not been brought to us and that we should be trained to understand and agree what it is in. <coughs> but Narissa, in her effort and the effort of the team, have forgotten one thing that you are people, you are not animals and a herd of sheep to send one way and whip a stick and say go so. And so they are guilty of taking that legislation to Parliament in 2011, 2013 and 2014 and they never told us. And now they bring it back and they tell us, but if a man spill all that oil in the sea, his penalty is less than you can imagine. His Correct. maximum penalty is $100,000. Correct. But they have 125 or 128 penalties that are 700,000 TT dollars. It has 4 million and 3 million. And maybe they are planning that those heavy penalties are for the international longliners, the international fleet. It does not say anywhere that that is international fleets. So this legislation is a disgrace because of two reasons. One is that we don't understand it. Well, let's say that first thing. Let's say we don't understand it and we will agree to come and explain it. And we, but the Prime Minister announced it going to Parliament and it passed it now. When it passed, it was going to go to a joint select committee. That was his statement. A joint select committee to report by St. Christopher. But the joint connection, they have five PNM and one UNC. Who representing us? Why we not appointed a joint select committee? Well, you can how will, no, the, the how will the fishermen be educated on we this? We will educate, we will come out and discuss when? it. When? Do you think it goes down? When you pass the law? It is enabling legislation. The details that we will talk in regulation. Everybody understand that? It says you must be licensed. Everybody agree you must be licensed? And the details will be worked out in regulation. No, no, no. Why did you bring that to my nose? When they're ready to pass it, we don't understand everything from 1980 something to now. We can have a Well, we have been having consultations on this since 1990. After all this time, you can't oh, tell me something today and then you don't have to know. Let's not talk. One person I have to discuss this. So we go back to the cut and then we close and we can discuss it. Let this government change where election is due, right? Would this project still be in progress? Huh? I would like to believe that. You would like to believe that? Awesome. I just want to remind you the cut that the positions that you outlined with respect to the other uh, phases of the project. That was, uh, was the same position as outlined by the Roxanne Stapleton with Manager for Police Communications in September of last year. It's the same position. So we have moved nowhere in nine months. So what's the position? How long is long? development have been started since Saribash was in power. Saribash started to do the backfilling water the jetty and since that they have been to do development. That backfilling by the jetty day from what we understand had caused 
$650 million. So far on King's Wharf, more than $1 billion has spent for development. And still we have reached nowhere yet. I will tell you the ways that the money has spent. The back filling is $650 million. That piling outside here, what I understand is, I, I, I'm not sure about figures, eh? about in Rina. 80 million. Right? A park built down by way. I don't know if it's 18 or 8 million at a day. Right? Um, they also do piling out of the fish market. The piling was to build some kind of building. But from what I understand, that the piling was not to build any building. The piling north of the fish market was to shake the fish market and break it down. That is what the piling was for. The vibration was to mash up the market. Vibration. But the market so strong till he stand up for himself. He faced all the vibration and all the piling. So what had happened is that Another 20 million wasted. Another 20 million wasted there. All of these millions that were Right? I don't know how much million presently spent right now on the back field. Right? So all of these is millions. It's only one billion dollars spent. Yeah, nothing properly have been done. What we reach here today is discussion about what the fishermen and them want. But we don't like the attitude of Uricot. To move and go somewhere else. If you understand the thing, they say you have to backfill. They say see what you could saying is that will our fishing is First, before we go anyway, because we don't like the idea or the attitude about Unicode and two, three different places that we are recommending for you to move and go, and we don't understand that. I think we have enough open space here to build the facilities. Right, so that is all I have to say. Very time being.